Boa tarde um, a todos. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And because we're here in Rio Grande do Sul, I can also say Guten Nachmittag, yeah? Um, so what language do you want? Um, I actually prefer English. Um, anyway, uh, a big thank you to the university for inviting me and to Gustavo um, for all your kindness and your cheerful personality and your red shoes. Muito legal, muito legal. Um, and, and also to Edgard, Edgard, um, who, there he is, who made the connection to uh, Unisinos and to TEDx. Um, I decided to put all the keywords, all the buzzwords into the first slide. Educação, design, inovação, criatividade, Empatia, impacto social. So now I can go. <laughs> um, I really like the title of this conference, uh, Innovação na Educação. Um, not only is it incredibly important, uh, but I also like how it sounds. To me, it sounds like rich, dark chocolate melting on my tongue. <laughs> um, I am a learning designer and a global educator, and um, for the past couple of years, I have also dipped my toes into some of these areas, especially design and creativity, social impact, and, and I'm really excited to be able to bring many of these passions and interests uh, together. I'm still a little bit sick. I caught a cold on the plane, and so, um, I apologize for my voice, and I'm going to speak a little bit slower, um, so hopefully you can understand uh, me uh, sharing my experiences and my thoughts with you in English. Um, I am sure that you all have heard of these three companies and organizations, Delight, Embrace, and Drip Tech, right? No? Wow, I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. So I wonder if you have heard of these. Uh, Google, Yahoo, and HP, or Hewlett Packard. Um, all these six organizations have one thing in common, and I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Um, they were all started by students at Stanford. Um, some of you might say, well, Stanford, sure, has a good reputation, attracts probably some smart students. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And then, of course, you have Silicon Valley around uh, Stanford, um, a hotbed for creativity and innovation, a um, hotbed for uh, company startups, um, and, and so maybe it's not a surprise that um, you have these new companies, known and unknowns, um, coming out of Silicon Valley. As a matter of fact, a lot of, um, as I've been working at Stanford uh, for 17 years and also at Apple Computer for two years, many foreign governments and companies visit Silicon Valley and they want to kind of copy, they want to clone that a magic mix of what makes Silicon Valley, the creativity and the innovation. And um, I think they haven't been able to, to do that yet, uh, partly because there's still some unknown variables. But I, I think one of, one of the known variables is the close connection between an institution of learning like Stanford University and the surrounding community, including uh, corporations. And I think one of, let, let me give you one example for why I think it's, it's more than just smart students and, and a nice climate uh, and a lot of opportunities to collaborate. 
I think it has a lot to do with innovative approaches to teaching and learning. And that's what this conference is about, to really think about how do we continue to innovate our approaches to teaching and learning. This is an example I want to share with you a little bit in detail. It's a, it's a traditional uh, product design course uh, based at the School of Engineering. It's a nine month long course, so it's very intense. Uh, it's the flagship course for the design department within the School of Engineering. And it does bring together students and a few professors and, and um, teaching assistants from different engineering disciplines, mostly mechanical engineering, but also electric engineering and some computer science. Um, the, the students work in small teams, ideally kind of from the uh, different disciplines or flavors of, of engineering. Um, they work on real world projects. It's a project based learning course. They work on projects sponsored by companies and companies like SAP or VW or Daimler or um, Toshiba. They, they pay um, a nice sum of money and they basically provide a real challenge that the students then have to work on. Uh, in addition, the students go through a couple of uh, workshops and hands-on activities to understand in a, in, a, in a practical way, not necessarily in, in, a, in, a, in a PowerPoint presentation, to understand what it takes to creatively find solutions to complex challenges or opportunities. So they go through what is referred to quite often a, a user-centered or a human-centered approach to finding solutions to challenges. Um, and they do this in an environment where there is a lot of coaching going on, facilitation from the academic side, professors and teaching assistants, and from the industry side. So there's a wonderful kind of uh, two-way exchange between uh, the, the, the two worlds that quite often are separate, separated, but many research universities in the United States have done a really good job in, in making that, that connection stronger. Um, as the students go through this very intense nine-month um, project-based learning course, they're also having a lot of fun discovering their creativity. They're, they're silly, they're laughing. Um, and, and fun is an important aspect of creativity. I think it's, it's one of the uh, principal uh, enablers to, to come up with creative ideas, to learn and work in a culture where it is okay. Actually, it's not just okay, it is encouraged to fail early and often. Every failure is an opportunity to learn, to learn new things. And that's what this course is really trying to convey to the students in a hands-on practical way. Of course, there's a lot of disciplinary coaching going on as well because they work on complex technical uh, challenges. Here, the first month of this course, students go very quickly through the design process and they have to build a paper bike or a vehicle only out of pa paper. And in this case, it was a vehicle that they would then use in a polo game. A lot of fun, a lot of fun and um, they learn in a very joyful way to be creative, to rediscover their creative creativity. Um, I was working with Professor Larry Leifer, who also is the director of the Center for Design Research at Stanford, and one of the founding fathers of this methodology called design thinking, which is really another word for describing a user, human-centered design uh, approach that is very collaborative, focuses a lot on trial and error, fail and learn, iterations, prototyping, testing. And um, before I came to Brazil, I was able to work with Professor Leifert to bring, to extend this design innovation pedagogy to Latin America, and we ended up working with a small Jesuit university in Colombia uh, Universidad Javeriana, um, and this was in Cali, 
you might ask why Kali. They had a really good small product design program, and they also uh, uh, had been familiar with design thinking. My friends would say I picked Kali because I wanted to brush up on my salsa dancing, um, which might not be totally untrue. Um, so let me come back to, uh, to the three uh, first examples, um, Delight, Embrace, and um, Drip Tech. These were three companies that all started uh, in one particular course. Uh, offered by the D School. The D School was really trying to take this creative, innovative process where students have fun, work together, fail off, and all these wonderful things, and take it outside the uh, mechanical engineering arena and offer this kind of approach to students from all disciplines, from political science, from law, from the School of Education, from medicine, and engage them in a collaborative process to work with community organizations to tackle complex, what we call wicked, difficult projects, such as how can we reduce drunk driving? How can we address homelessness in San Francisco? How can we build a better school? How can we bring creativity back into the school? Let me talk, just one quick question. Is that time remaining or? <laughs> remaining, okay. Uh, important difference, yeah? Uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, creativity because that's really uh, what I feel is, is at the core of, of uh, innovation na education. Um, Brendan Boyle is the director of the toy lab at IDEO. IDEO is a very famous, successful design innovation company. Now, wouldn't you want to be the director at a toy lab? Um, so, in a, in, a, in a blog posting recently, uh, he was talking about, just imagine to take the creative chaos of a kindergartner and put it into the workplace. Uh, you would try out crazy things, you wouldn't care what Johnny said, um, you would go on field trips, you would just be at, at awe about all the amazing opportunities in the world. Um, and then many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Sir Ken Robinson, uh, an educational researcher from Britain and also uh, an expert in creativity. I think he actually gave uh, one of the most uh, popular talks uh, that is on the TED website. And he is basically saying, his argument is that we're educating uh, creativity out of students as they move through the educational system. And he makes the point that creativity now, to teach creativity is as, export, as important as teaching literacy. Putting all this together, um, my, my, my experiences with some of the design uh, creativity courses and programs at Stanford, uh, my passion and interest uh, in, in global education and specifically working uh, in Latin America. I was invited by uh, the Universidad de Sao Paulo a year ago to start a new program, the Laboratorio de Design, Innovación and Creatividad. And what we tried to do was really kind of pick and choose, take the best things of all these programs, project-based learning, multidisciplinary teams, uh, focusing on a human-centered design process, uh, infusing a lot of joy and fun, uh, exploring things, making mistakes, laughing. Those are the kinds of things that we try to do. And, and I hope that during this workshop over the past two days, we were able to do some of these things. De Uspe Lesche uh, has three main parts. One is students work with community members and professors on the same level on challenges proposed by the community. In this case, uh, Zona Lesche. The second component is a series of hands-on workshops where they go through the creative process of problem solving finding out what are the real needs of uh, the people we work with and for, and how do we synthesize and distill all the information that we have collected through observations, immersion, interviews, 
How do we do good brainstorming? And then how do we translate the brainstorming into uh, prototypes? The third component is um, creative, flexible learning spaces. I believe very strongly that spaces need to encourage for um, creativity and play. And this is the space at Stanford. We didn't have as much time, as much money and time at USP. The university gave us an empty space. I asked the, uh, the students to basically build a creative space. They put up whiteboards, which are not white, for five reais per, per sheet. Very creative. At the end, we had an exp an, uh, a design expo where they shared their prototypes and products, and these could be products or also um, role plays. I want to talk a little bit about empathy because empathy to me is one of the key aspects of so many things in life, but also of learning. Empathy in this case relates to two things. One, the students and the professors being able to really understand the challenges of the community organizations to put themselves into the shoes of others. Uh, the second aspect is um, empathy from a learning perspective. If you have a professor and a student working together in a real project, there's a very good chance that they really get to learn each other's perspective. Uh, we had some examples, some projects, a mobile banking project that went through this design process and they changed their design challenge because after the first couple of weeks, they were really able to understand what is the real problem of the community bank that is trying to increase the impact of the social money. Um, wrapping it up, um, TEDx encouraged us to share our dreams. And so I'm going to share with you two dreams, my big dream and my crazy dream. Uh, my big dream is to work with learning organizations, schools, universities, uh, less formal uh, organizations to support learning, nonprofit organizations, companies, to really bring creativity back into their daily life, learning or working. I also feel very passionate about connecting the learning with innovations for social impact. Um, I'd love to do that across Brazil, across Latin America, and across the world. Um, my crazy, that's, my, that's my big dream. My crazy dream is to, to get a bus. It doesn't have to be the hippie bus. Uh, a bus with air conditioning would be fine. Um, and, and travel from one school to another, from one city to another. Coordinate that with a larger effort to really integrate that with uh, uh, with a, a national plan, work with local communities, uh, local um, schools of education to think about teacher professional development, and thus really bringing a creative design thinking approach, a joyful approach to learning to as many organizations as possible. Um, that's my crazy dream, and that's the end. Thank you very much.